This tutorial is to help you um, find a few ways to make variables or use variables in Scratch uh, to keep score, possibly add lives or some other uh, reward system. So in this uh, Scratch project, if we, if we hit run, you'll see there's a cat where you have keyboard control. Um, the cat can throw a baseball and there's a bat that chases it until the baseball hits the bat. There you go. Let me stop that. So if we want to put in a score system, we have to think about what do we really want to keep track of? What do we want to count? And a simple way to do this is we could, we could give the cat a point every time it throws the baseball at the bat. So that every time the protagonist uh, can hit the antagonist with a projectile, the protagonist gets a point. So it, the action that has to happen is the baseball has to touch the bat. So we're going to create a variable. And if you, if you click on the variable block, you'll see there's a, a block over here that says make variable. And let's just call it score. Uh, we're going to set it for all sprites. And hit OK. Now right over here, you'll see the variable showed up. If you click that box, uh, or unclick it, it will appear on the stage. So if it's not, if that box is not checked, it won't appear. If it is, it will. We're going to need to create another script. And that'll go right over here. And we're writing the script for the baseball. Uh, let's set up forever loop because we want this to work anytime the program is being run. And our condition is going to use an if then block. So the condition we uh, just talked about is if the baseball touches the bat, we want the score to go up by one point. Now under variables, a few blocks will show up. Uh, and the first is we should, when we start the game, we should probably set, set the score variable to zero. Um, and then once it gets running, if the baseball touches the bat, let's change the score by one. And we'll run that and see how it works. Here we go. Seemed to work. And it's working pretty well. Uh, one problem you may run into, and I'll show you this in a moment, um, is that it won't increase by the exact amount. And in this example, it is. Um, but let's take a look at another one. Let's say we want to add lives. Well, we'd add the lives to the cat. So again, let's make another variable. And we'll do the same thing. We'll create uh, another event block. We're, we're writing a script for this variable, a forever loop, and an if then. And we could do more or less the same thing. If the cat uh, is touching the bat, we'll decrease it by one life. So since we have a cat here, we are going to set the lives. Uh, cats have nine lives, so we'll set it to nine. Blocks are getting a little mixed up here. Even though normally you get three, we'll, we'll set it to nine. And if it touches the bat, we're going to change it by negative one. So let's run this program. And you can see the lives are set to nine. And as soon as the bat goes over here, doesn't seem to be working. Oh, it is. It's almost working too good. So we run into a problem here that for every hundredth of a second the bat touches the cat, it takes a life away. So we don't want this to work as quickly as the computer will allow it to work. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of a delay. And now it goes down a little bit more slowly. And that's not a bad idea to add to everything. We didn't add this to the score, but it's not, not a bad practice that if you want something to count up slowly or down slowly and be accurate, 
add that weight one second. Maybe you'll need to change it to a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, but this way um, you get an accurate counter. And then you can set it so it does something if lives equal zero. So there you go. That's a simple way to use variables to create a uh, counting system to keep score or lives. And before I go, I should just add that in. There we go. Good luck programming.